Hello, I'm Elaine Stevens, and I want to welcome you to Artbeat. Hello and welcome to Artbeat. Well, Artbeat has taken you to Gallery 782 in the past, but tonight we're here for a totally different reason. We're actually here to save our golf wildlife. So stay tuned for more Artbeat. We'll be right back right after this. you have just tuned in you are watching art beat and we are at gallery 782 and you know one of the things that's most wonderful about south mississippi as we've been told many times is our resilience and bringing joy to something that is truly a crisis well linda saxon nix happens to have done that with this event here tonight the artists are gathered here to donate proceeds from their work back right. to saving the gulf so tell us a little bit about how you came up with that idea. Well, our theme for this July month was supposed to have been things that fly, and I sent an email out to all the members asking who all was going to bring artwork in. Well, our membership chairperson decided to say, well, maybe we could make this a fundraiser and change it to things that fly to everything that's, that's related to the oil because that's been so much in the news. So we decided to go with it, and, and it's a fundraiser for the animals of the Gulf, and we're giving the proceeds to the Institute of Marine Mammal Studies and to the Pascagoula River Audubon Society's uh, Education Center. So 10% of everything tonight will go to the organizations and then 10% of all the featured artists in this room and in the other room will go all month long. Plus some of the artists are going to give up to 80%, 25%, wow, that's so amazing. not just 10% is going to be given. We, we love our animals. <laughs> yes, I know, and it, I, I tell you what, when an artist paints something that comes from their spiritual energy field, mm -hmm. and then they have the soul to donate some of that money back, that's quite extraordinary, Linda. Well, we love our gulf animals. Yes, we do. A lot of us paint pelicans, I mean, even before all of this, and it seems that people are really wanting to get art that's concerned with the yes, pelicans I and agree. the turtles. It's, it's just what they're, they're, they're thinking, they're going to go away like Katrina. Everything's going to disappear, which I certainly hope not. Well, I'm sure that the artists appreciate your efforts in putting this whole thing together. And now the public really needs to know, what can they do? How can they participate? Uh, well, they can come all through the month. Uh, like I said, the proceeds are going to be 10% of all the featured artists art all month long. And they can buy art or we have a donation jar that every bit of it's going to go to the foundations. Right. And well, we're at Gallery 782 right behind Mary Mahoney's in Biloxi in the Beaumarche. This is right. a non-profit cooperative type of effort among many artists here in South Mississippi. So this is something you can also do to help and when you read about the oil crisis know that you don't have to give up hope that there's something that we can do to participate right. in this. And the more people who care I think the better off our animals will be. Absolutely. It looks like a lot of people are pouring in for the reception. They are. We're going to take a look around the gallery and uh, interview some of the artists. How does that Wonderful. sound? Wonderful. That okay. sounds great. All right. We're on our way, Phil.
Well, for those of you who are regular viewers of Artbeat, you may remember MC Drake from one of our shows when we first came to the gallery. It's great to have you with us again. Thank you. And I just love her work. Here is a, one of the, her many, many contributions to the Gulf cause. And it's, of course, it's a little tortoise. It's a little, a little hawksbill turtle. But I have to tell you, it's not long for this world. I'm buying it tonight and taking it to Los Angeles oh, and giving it to my son. It's such a beautiful gift, Thank I think. You. And it comes from your very own hands. So. The noise, by the way, that you're hearing in the background, let me just tell you, is the door to this gallery gets stuck. Yes, you know, it and It's a very old building. We're standing in what? This building it must be at least 125 it's, years old. I think they say 1794. Oh, my. They, well, yeah. I was off by a couple of hundred years. So there yeah, you have it. So in case right. you hear the, the noise, that's what you're hearing. The humidity makes the door swell. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but above so us here is one of your most beautiful works. Thank you. I mean, do tell us about it. Obviously, we know it's the Pelicans. Well, it's uh, it's a 24 by 48 acrylic on our gallery wrap canvas, and uh, I wanted all the Pelicans in flight. Most times, you see them and they're sitting on yes, a, a that's pier. Yes, right. And what I did, um, I googled images of the brown pelican, uh. which is different from. The eastern or western. Pelican. Yes, absolutely, totally so, different. So, and then I probably ran off uh, about three dozen images for reference, and and I combined the ones I wanted so they look like they're. So you natural. actually did a lot of research before painting this. Oh yes, oh yeah, and I think uh, most artists do, whether you know it or not. You you just can't paint out of your head. So you usually, um, I have another piece in the gallery, it's uh, a back bay with all the rushes, but I go over the Popsbury Bridge every day. Yeah. So that's, that's where I get that. Well, it's just so wonderful to see these artists participating in what has become our now, not unnatural disaster, but a, a man-made disaster. Yes, yes. And helping the cause by donating these proceeds. But now, did you do research on my turtle here yes, too? Yes. Oh, I didn't want to do a turtle that was not native right. to our area. Right. area. So usually when you think of turtles, you think of the very large uh, turtles in North and South Carolina. And that's not what we have. We have the smaller turtles. So I did research that. I sure did. So, um, but well, the colors you use are so beautiful and they're so you. vivid. Now, this is also an acrylic. That's acrylic. Yes. That's acrylic. But I, I have to tell you that MC's work is unique. You need to come to Gar Gallery 782. I mean, her work is quite expansive Thank in a variety you. of topics, not Thank just you. golf sea life. But no, I, I I like to do figures and I like to do uh, animals, whimsical animals. So yeah, whatever I'm thinking of at particular time. Well, the one thing that is really remarkable here tonight is a lot of these artists contributed their work and they strictly donated it from the standpoint of this event tonight. Yes, yes. The work was created specifically for this cause. Yes, I think especially a lot of the uh, smaller pieces and the 10% of the proceeds tonight go to our uh, particular um, organization. Right, let me explain that to but us. But a lot of the artists are giving as much as 90%. That's so we it, heard. it's That's on an individual absolutely. basis what they want to do. So if you don't want to don a jumpsuit and put on rubber gloves and a hard hat and get out on the beach, this is one way you can contribute. You, you can, can come help. down to right. Gallery 782 and purchase some beautiful and lasting art, and actually the money will go to the cause. Yes, yes, yes. Very, and very thank good. you for getting the word absolutely. out. Absolutely. We look forward to meeting a few of the other artists. Stay yeah. tuned. With more yeah. Artbeat right after this. Well, you're watching Artbeat, and there are a lot of people here today that are supporting the cause of donating to wildlife and saving the animals of the Gulf. And my guest here today is Megan Broadway. She's with the Institute. Now, how does it feel to be a part of this whole cause? All these people have rallied around these animals. Well, definitely it's, it's a great cause, but it's an unfortunate cause, and we all wish it could have been prevented. But it is so wonderful to have community support and to be here in Biloxi today at this event and to have the support of local artists and local people who want to save their golf and the animals that live there. So now, just of course, you know the proceeds are going to go to this, but how will you use that? Um, we use donations for many different ways. They go toward animal care, the medications for animals, treatments for animals. Um, we have you know, a, a small staff and many volunteers, so volunteering your time is one way to help, but those donations are really important to get medications that are needed, the equipment that are needed, um, animals get x-rays, medications like antibiotics and different treatments, um, oil school animals have 
different needs. Um, we have to have precautions for people that are working with the animals and also different, um, different medications, equipment, eye washes, different things like that. So how widespread is the dilemma, Megan? I mean, we hear a lot about uh, it in the news, we read about it, but we're not really sure. You're, you're right there in the trenches. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more? Um, yes, since this still started, uh, we have responded to a number of animals dead and alive. So every animal that comes in takes special precautions. If we get a report of a, a dead animal, we go out and we take special samples to, make, to see if that was an oiled animal not and animals that we, we get that are oiled we've had five turtles so far that have been oiled and they're all baby turtles from Alabama so they're especially you know vulnerable to this then we take special care to clean those animals and that's what we're, we're seeing. So how do you feel about the mortality right now? Are we doing a pretty good job of saving a lot of them? It's really hard to say because for every animal that we do see, there's always um, a greater number that we aren't seeing that are out there that no one is responding to, nobody knows about. So that's the real question is how many animals are there out there that haven't been responded to yet. So we were watching you address the many people that are here tonight. There is quite a furor over this cause. And you were saying to them that if they spotted something, they need to contact you. So do tell us how that happens. Definitely. There are a number of of um, different organizations that are participating in the spill. So you can go to the Department of Marine Resources website to see a lot of those numbers. But our organization specifically responds to the sea turtles in any marine mammals that are found. So for those animals especially, you can call us um, and we respond to Mississippi and Alabama. Our, and our number is one 888 sos dolphin And that's our hotline number. one 888 SOS dolphin, plural dolphin, one dolphin. Okay, one eight 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 SOS dolphin, the singular. We'll have to get that up there and make sure that people call. And wow, this is an amazing cause. We wish you much success, and thank you for being a part of the efforts here on our Gulf Coast. Well, thank you. Yeah, we can take a little tour and come back with more Art Beat right after this. Art beat this is at Gallery 782. We're with Linda Jones, one of the fabulous jewelry designers. I happen to be wearing one of her creations, and you're wearing one of your own creations. Yes, I am. And you know, the beauty of these kinds of events is that it brings a lot of friends and family that have known each other for many years together. And we have not been together <laughs> for a while. We've known each other no. for about 40 years now. Close. Since our children were yes, born, just about. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, Linda's work is fabulous, and it's at Gallery 782. And you, like so many of the other artists, are donating 10% of the proceeds to the cause of saving wildlife. And not just for tonight, but all month. So all, all the of month my, of July. All of my sales for the month will be 10%. The proceeds will go for the wildlife. Well, like so many people that do art, Linda has had many passages in her life, and this is really a remarkable endeavor for you. I mean, I, when I first came in here and saw your jewelry, I was really quite surprised and bought a bunch. <laughs> so tell me how you happened to get into this. In grade school. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. <laughs> no, I saved my lunch money. I went and bought beads every day and sold it on the playground until I got busted <laughs> at school. <laughs> well, look, it's it's really turned out well, these beads from the playground. I'll tell you what. This is actual red coral, is it It's not? red coral. It's um, uh, bamboo coral or sponge coral. I get confused, but it's, it's definitely coral. And the silver is fine silver, which is... Um, Purer than sterling silver. Purer than sterling silver. All of Linda's work has this wonderful southern Biloxi feel to it, I think. It's just remarkable. We moved here in 1969, right before Camille, and made this our home. And as we've lived here, it just seems that this is natural for me, what I do. It has just evolved into this. It's taken many years. I did other things, but I've always loved jewelry, always played with it, but now I spend a lot of time to it. I really her enjoy work it. work is beautiful. And this entire area over here in Gallery 782 is dedicated to Linda's work. You are quite prolific. I mean, how long does it take you to make one piece? This one probably took me mentally. I worked on this for over a month. Just I couldn't get it out of my mind, but what am I going to do? When I finally finished it, I had worked on it a couple of days. 
not that long, putting it together once you get it in your mind. And then if you're not satisfied, sometimes you have to take it all apart and start again. Do you really have to do that very often? Um, in the red coral that you're wearing, it is so in my mind right now that it's it's like butter. It's just smooth. It's easy going for me. It's easy and, to work with. Then other pieces that I create that are brand new really are a long process. Well, you know, your jewelry is unlike a lot of jewelry that you see with the small diminutive beads. I mean, it's bold and it's exciting and it's colorful. So do you dream about this at night? What is the inspiration for it? Well. I like simple clothes and statement jewelry. That's okay. just my personal taste. I also like non-jewelry jewelry, which means I have this little crystal necklace on, and when I'm wearing blue jeans, and I don't really think of it as jewelry, I wear this, just this. Well, you know, I think I have that. You I do? Have, I have one. <laughs> you have like one? That. Yeah, I you do. do. So I have my non-jewelry jewelry, which is not statement pieces. And then I really like one piece. And so I try not to do earrings and a necklace that take away from each other, but complement each other. For example, your silver loops are great with that because the loops are simple and classic. And then that says, look at me. <laughs> so. Well, it sounds like if someone came in here, which I did that time, the first time I discovered your jewelry, and had a special outfit in mind, you could help them sort of match it all up? Well, not only the outfit, but I look at the person more than the clothes. Wow. I look at their height, I look at what length would be flattering, the colors, and then how do they wear their jewelry day to day or just special occasion. And I try to pick something that is not, well, I only wear this with that outfit. I really think that a statement piece should is part of who you are. And so I don't particularly just do outfits. I really make things like that red to me is a neutral. You might say, oh, Linda, that red's not neutral. It really is. No, it is. I can understand that. And I understand the way you, you're explaining that. And it's really a different and innovative way to wear jewelry. I want to look at more of your stuff over here. So okay. let's take a little walk over to this particular case and take okay. a look at it. Is there something in particular that you want to showcase? I know that well, the that shell piece is my latest piece. May we open that? Yes. And let's see if we can pull it out. Here. Let me. I love. I love this for the simplicity. These are um, top drilled stick pearls. These are pearls. These are pearls. These are called stick pearl, and they're top drilled, which makes them you know, kind of roughly. Then I've added uh, Zworski crystals in here, elongated wow. like the pearls. And then I, I, I found this shell in Florida and then I drilled it, put a bail on it. And I think that this, you could wear this with any color, white, black, any color. It is absolutely stunning so, and unique. And Linda Jones, really, you have a remarkable eye. I had no idea you were like this when I was next door to you all those years. We were doing diapers and baby well, food true. and bottles and chasing ah. toddlers well, and that girl, kind of thing. Girl, you've come a long way. I tell you, this is absolutely magnificent. I, I was noticing these diminutive tortoises, the turtles, that we have, we're have we just enchanted with right now here on the coast. Well, with the wildlife theme, I wanted to do something, and so I found these really cute turtles, and I worked them up in just simple loops, so you can wear this. This is almost non-jewelry jewelry, just yeah. very, very simple. And then I like to be bodacious as well. I like earrings and bracelets together rather than necklace and earrings. Right. Okay. So then I did this bracelet of turtles that I like with the earrings. So that is so delicate, but it's just beautiful. And what now? What kind of stones are those? Now these like are. Of pearl. This is a. This is also a stick pearl, but it's oh, it center is? drilled. Wow. It's center drilled instead of top drilled, and uh, and then it's of course it's sterl the sterling silver, and then these are small pearls that I drill the holes in those just as beautiful. well. So I like you know a simple piece with a statement piece. Um, the other fun thing that I just absolutely love to do is have a lot of fun. Why not be bodacious sometime? These are Swarovski crystals. Everyone loves Swarovski crystals. But I thought, well, let's not just do them halfway. Let's just go all the way. They are magnificent. And then I have those, and then the ones I have on are stars and moons. I did a... Oh, they, these are beautiful. Yeah, and what, each one is different. Yeah, which I think is fun. Everything I do, I also keep in mind the cost. My prices, I try to keep within a 
a third of what they would cost to retail somewhere else. Well, can we find your items anywhere else besides Gallery 782 right now? Um, my oh my is a gift shop in Edgewater Mall, and I have a website. Wonderful. Uh, Linda what is your Jones website? Designs. Uh, dot com, uh, dot com. Jones Designs. Dot com. Linda Jones Designs. Dot com. Well, it's you know when I wear her earrings, people come to me and say you're wearing that Linda Jones jewelry. They you? do. <laughs> they really do. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it's been happening. It has um, happened. I do a lot of. Uh, I like to redesign jewelry. For, for example, if you had a piece of jewelry that was important to you, but you don't wear it for the design, but the, but it's significant to you, I love to remake it for you so that you can have that significant piece, but made in a style that so it won't sit in a drawer. So I well, love to see, take that is something I have never thought of doing. Usually, when when I see a piece of jewelry that I haven't worn, I usually give it away. Well, so we can redesign it. Um, I do repair. Um, that's okay. I don't mind doing that, and I love hand tying pearls. Hand tying pearls. That is tedious, but rewarding for I can sit for, for four, four, five, six hours. My husband will come and say, Linda, have you eaten yet today? And I go, well, oh, mm, okay, I remember now. Oh, did you free feed the cats? No, I forgot. <laughs> I'm stringing pearls. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm wearing something really luscious also on my wrist by Linda Jones. And if you know, the clasp on this is unique. I well, it's of course, it's a toggle clasp, but it's got a, a wave to it. And what I, I like about it is bracelets so often fall off. This they is do. so secure. When you get this, this is going to stay put. Now, what kind of stones are these? These are lead crystals. Oh, um, wow. They are not the Swarovski crystals, um, but they are lead crystals. And then I've just added uh, sterling silver little um, accents throughout. So that's a it's that is a statement stunning. piece. That and a pair of earrings. Yes, does absolutely it. stunning. We have to come down to Gallery 782 or go to My Oh My. But today, if you come and actually through the month of July, if you come to Gallery 782 and purchase any of the items created by these amazing artists of South Mississippi, some of the proceeds will go to saving the wildlife on the coast. But do stay with us. We have more people to visit and more art to see right after this message. Thanks, Lane. You're welcome. <laughs> Welcome back to Artbeat. We're so thrilled that you're watching Gallery 782 and the remarkable cause that they're dedicating to the animals of the Gulf. And uh, one of the artists here is Vernon Nix. So happy to have you. You're the only Thank man you. on the show this time. <laughs> Well, I'm usually the token man wherever I oh, go. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, I understand your wife had a lot to do with it, but you're also a contributing yes. artist here, yes. and you've done some remarkable pieces. Do tell us I, about your work. I, I'm, I, I'm, I do pottery. I, I started doing pottery when I retired because I had to have something to do. And this, this little effect here is something new that I started trying to do just to see if I could do it. Well, and obviously you do it well. Well, the, the, the secret is in the glaze, you know. You can do bowls, a bowl is a bowl, but... Oh, it's so, yeah, each one looks the, very different just because but, of the glaze. And that's not, no, it's not, basically, it's the same glaze with a little bit of different glaze on it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's where the real challenge is. And I'm, I, I, I call myself modern artifacts. People don't understand what an artifact is most of the time. And I say I'm a lot like George Orr. I can't do two pieces alike either. Well, that's good, though. I Each know. one is an original. Yeah, And you know what's I so neat it. about Vernon's work is if you look inside, there's almost like a fingerprint of some sort. So it looks like you mark it with something unique. Well, I do mark it with something unique, but it's on the bottom. Oh. A little, you can't see it for the camera, but you can see it up close. It's just... When, my, when I was in the ninth grade, myself and two other fools decided to come <laughs> up with, you know, how boys will do with a, a name for ourselves, and that was mine. Do so you want to tell us what it is, or is it a secret? It's just something <laughs> I came up with. I have no idea. Okay, it's sort of a secret symbol, then. Yes, Absolutely. just me. And this is one of mine. I, oh, I love that. Just experimenting with different colors and different glazes. And, of course, we have the fish all around it. Mm -hmm. And I love the way you've mixed sort of a deep maroon mm -hmm. with, uh, with the aquamarine. Well, that's, what, that's really what that is. It's, this is a butterscotch over with, with one, uh, a turquoise color. That you, know, you, you do it for the effects to see what the different effects will be for you. Now, how do you achieve each different shape? Because each of the bowls has somewhat of a different shape. The clay and I commune together. <laughs> And you must have fun doing that. Right? Yes. <laughs> it decides what I'm it's going to let me do. And Absolutely. that's basically the way it comes about. You know, you, you start off 
any potter will tell you, you start off with a cylinder and then you go from there with whatever you're going to have. So what I come up with, I don't really, I'm not a good enough potter that I know what I want to do when I start. When I get going, I let it come out to be what it's going to be. And, and that's the way I do it. And it's just fun, something to do to keep yourself mentally alert. Out of trouble. Well, I don't know about that either, but thank you very much. <laughs> when I first met him tonight, he said he's no artist. And I said, well, what is it that you do? And he said, I create pottery. Well, this is truly, as you can see, truly artistic pottery. Thank you, ma'am. You're you very are, kind. You are uh, humble beyond words about your work, and you have to come down here to Gallery 782. Where else can we find your work? I have work over in Gina's and Ocean Springs, and that's about it, I, and at my house. and. Now, I know that they, Linda works with other mediums and, yes. and, and well, She started doing pottery, too, by the way. Okay. And uh, she's created some, I think, beautiful work. She has a vase that I wish I could create the colors that she has on this. Just gorgeous. I love That's it. a woman's touch, Vernon. I don't Thank think you very ever. much. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> so what is next for you in the art world? This is about it. I've got my grandson coming over. He and I are going to do pottery. Well, that is a fun thing to teach yes. children at an early age. Well, he, to loves create. he loves it. He loves it. I love working with him. We have met so many wonderful people here at Gallery 782 and Biloxi at the Beaumarchais today. I urge you to come down here when you can. It's right behind Mary Mahoney's. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more Art Beat right after this. Thank you all so very much. much. You're so good. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome.